Hey, it's Dan. Welcome back. You're watching I Allegedly. And uh, I've got a good one for you today. I forgot to say that last time. Anyways, um, but this is crazy. What we're going through is backwards land right now. And I'm going to give you guys some serious examples of what I'm talking about with this. So please like the video. Please comment in the video. Subscribe to the channel. Share. Uh, the video with everybody, but man oh man, have we seen nuts right now. I, I want you to think about this. I'm gonna cover things that are gonna cover a myriad of topics right now. First one is out of AP, Associated Press. They're talking about the American consumer is finally sick of inflation and they're going to slay inflation by not buying things, okay? So we're teaching these businesses a lesson by not purchasing things. Who believes that? People cannot afford McDonald's right now, guys. People cannot afford to go out to dinner. People cannot afford the high price of a vehicle. Read this article below, and they're trying to act like you're slaying this by not purchasing things and saying, I've had enough. Well, so are we gonna not pay rent because we've had enough? Are we not gonna buy gas and go to work because we've had enough? No, it doesn't work that way. It, it, it's insane. You have to eat, you need water, you need electricity to keep the lights on, you, most of us need internet. You know what I mean? But hey, I'm teaching you a lesson right now with the fact that I'm not going to put up with this. This is one of these little tiny parks up here on Cliff Drive here in Newport Beach. It's just stunning. Hello, just sit here and watch the boat. It's also the greatest spot to watch the boat parade in Newport Beach. You just pull up a chair and this place will be loaded with 200 people, this little tiny park. But anyways, we're supposed to believe that the consumer is controlling this. No, we have no control over this. We can't control prices. We're, you know, yeah, you can speak and, and stand up to things and you can politically fight against things. And if you are against a, you know, a retailer and you don't believe in their politics right now, yeah, you can use your dollars and not shop there. But to sit there and say that we're standing up to these people and this is making the big difference is absolute lunacy. You know, I, you know, the, there was an appeals court that blocked uh, the latest uh, student loan forgiveness thing. I'm telling you guys, you're going to wake up and find out that your student loans are not forgiven. Yes, they are. No, they're not. Right now, it's no, they're not. So get yourself ready to pay for these loans because they're determining that it is unconstitutional just to wave a magic wand and give you this money back. Now, again, I've gotten a lot of heat over this and I love when people write me and they get angry and say things like, you have no idea how strapped I am because I have these loans. What are you doing with your degree? The idea with college guys, I thought wasn't to go out and, and you know chase girls and drink. I thought it was to go out and learn something to get a better career in life. Oh wow, that's, that, would be, that would have been a good idea. But no, a lot of people use the money and spent the money in the wrong way. They're building a house on the side of this cliff right here. You can see that. But I'm gonna sit in the shade for a second and just enjoy this. You know how insane this is? So once again, also if anybody has gotten these loans forgiven, you better put that on your taxes because they're going to give people a 1099. Um, and uh, you need to talk to the IRS and see if that is taxable income because one thing that's happening is when loans go bad and you stiff the bank and the bank forecloses on you, they come back and then issue a 1099 for the whole loan amount as if you got $200,000 in free money. That doesn't seem fair, okay? Well, that's the way it works, guys. And again, you know, we're using our, our feet to walk away from these high prices and we're teaching these sellers. Are you kidding? I mean, read that article from the Associated Press. It's insane how they can print nonsense like that Prices are too high and people don't have any money. People are not making, the wages that you earn are not keeping up with the inflation. Now, real estate guru told me to look out for certain things in the economy. And when this happens, you're gonna see that there's problems in real estate. One of them, I talked about the other ones, free rent and uh, different incentives that they give to people. And also buildings that were going to be sold 
get ended up uh, being listed as rentals. That's a big red flag. The other red flag is the, con the creative finance right now. Everything from nothing down. Um, what was it? David Allen, Robert Allen. Anyways, the guy wrote a great book in the 70s called Nothing Down, how you could buy property. And he had a newspaper that gave him the challenge of could he buy properties for nothing down. And the guy ended up buying five houses, nothing down. And uh, somebody will tell me what the guy's name was, but his last name was Allen. Great guy, great book. But right now, one thing that you're seeing is people that are retirees that may own a house free and clear, they're carrying the paper themselves directly. So you can get into houses. I am telling you, you want you if you have to buy a house, you can do it that way. But the problem is that you risk buying something at the top of the market and buying an appreciated asset. Why don't you look at what happened in 2008? Why don't you look at what happened in 09, 2010, 2011, 2012 was property values dropped. Oh, that will never happen again, Dan. That will never happen. Here in California, they're talking about how housing prices are gonna go down this month because realtors that are buyer's agents are going to tell people that you need to come up with the cash to make a deal. Now, once again, if you have a $400,000 house and you have a 3% commission and you have to come up with an extra $12,000, that doesn't seem insurmountable. When it is 60 grand for a $2 million house that somebody's gonna help you walk through the paperwork, it's, it gets a little more expensive, a little more crazy. This neighborhood I'm walking through, I, uh, Christmas time last year when I did this, uh, the cheapest house on this street was uh, six million bucks. So pay that six times three is 18, it's 180 grand to have them write the paperwork up for you. That sounds like a deal. Um, hackers stole uh, $2.7 billion, $2.7 billion contacts, um, including social security numbers. I'm telling you guys, these hacking groups that are out there, they have your data. You have to go out and check your personal credit report to see if anybody's got anything, to see if anybody's ran your credit, if anybody's signed up for anything, if there's any accounts that could be in your name. You know, Fifth Third Bank or Third, you know, fifth, whatever that horrible name is, they just got nailed for uh, charging people for insurance. First Fifth or whatever it is, that's a, hor it's a horrible name for a bank. But anyways, that bank did a Wells Fargo where they charged people for insurance that they didn't order. How can they do that, Dan? That's not, doesn't seem legal. It's not legal, guys. It's not legal. So, what else? Yeah, the home buyers are getting creative. You know, how about this? And I'm gonna go there to the Bitcoin hell office here in California. Santa Monica, California is a hellhole now. It used to be a beautiful city. There used to be a place called, a shopping district called the Third Street Promenade that is crime ridden right now. It is not a safe place by any means. The last time I was there was right before the Super Bowl when the Rams and I think it was Cincinnati Bengals played. Guys bathing in the fountain out front, people throw change in the fountain, people grab that. Absolutely a, a, just unbelievable. All the stores are closed, majority of them. And the stores that are open have complained about the excessive robbery attempts and they can't stop these people, cannot tell them to, to, to go away, cannot do anything about it. And this is getting worse and worse and worse right now. Okay, so, you know, people, people are fed up right now and uh, they have a Bitcoin office there. Now, Santa Monica is going to be the Bitcoin capital of California and we're going to have a Bitcoin office in uh, Santa Monica. Who cares? Why don't you clean up the crime in Santa Monica? Why don't you make it so somebody can, a tourist can go there and not worry about getting mugged, getting out of their car? How about that? How about getting the junkies off the street? And then when you go one mile over to Venice Beach, that is hell, guys. Venice Beach is hell. It used to be one of the largest tourist destinations in the, the world. And now you'd have to be, you know, what, unless you're going there to buy drugs, I mean, or sleep on the beach, it's an absolute disaster now to go to Venice Beach. So, but they're gonna have a Bitcoin office. Congratulations to Santa Monica. This state, I love it for a lot of reasons. Look at the beauty of it. Isn't that stunning? Okay, it's fantastic. But the idiots that run this state, it's unbelievable what they come up with and how we're supposed to believe it's good. You know, the mayor of LA, Karen Bass, is, we're gonna combat homelessness. And this was a, uh, a 
uh, a story I read today. I'm like, what are you talking about? You've been in office for like two years now. You haven't done anything about it. There's still $23 billion missing from this, but you've got cities like Santa Monica that are closing down and they're gonna fight homelessness. You know, uh, Blink Fitness, uh, they went out of business. They were one of those $15 a month uh, gyms. They went out of business, filed for bankruptcy. And again, people don't have the extra money. People are also lazy. Going to the gym is one of those things that people, ah, you know, I'm gonna work out next week. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go do that. And they don't do it. And procrastination is a killer. Procrastination from a guy that's a creator and do thing, that does things, you know. I think about my day. My day was supposed to start about three hours ago and I finally, oh, I'm gonna go out and film, okay? Phone call after phone call after this, that, everything, you know? And it's just crazy what happens with this. But procrastination kills people and kills things like gyms. So, you know, Tesla, go out and buy a Cybertruck right now, you know? Last night, Elon Musk had Donald Trump on X, and, you know, the European Union made a big deal out of this because, uh, you know, Mr. Musk, you better not have him say anything that's questionable. How insane is that? Talking about censorship and all this stuff is nuts, but Tesla just announced that there will be no starter Cybertruck. Wow, wait a second. So the $61,000 starter, starter Cybertruck is non-existent, guys. It's not there. You want a cyber truck, you have to pay $100,000 for that cyber truck. Cyber truck, driven by a stupid. Anyways, um, you know what I mean? So I love them. I, lo I love how ugly they are and I just get a kick out of it. But there's no cheap cyber truck anymore. It's not a good uh, model for us right now. Okay, thanks. The next one is uh, LL Flooring goes bankrupt. Uh, 94 of their stores. Once again, people are not even remodeling their homes right now. We have seen this in the UK. We have seen it here. You have businesses closing. If you are a business owner who is surviving right now, God love you, because more power to you for getting through this right now. I love coming up here and sitting here with my internet and just watching the boats go by, because it is beautiful. But. LL Flooring, done, 94 stores, guys. Think of all the, what if they had four people work there, okay? You know, hundreds of people are losing their jobs today right now. This is terrible. Probably a dozen, 20, probably a thousand people lost their jobs with the announcement of this bankruptcy. That is horrific. And nobody wants to sit there and think, ah, maybe there's a problem here. So, you know, I'm sick of the lies and the censorship and things like that. For those of you that are ever on TikTok, TikTok is a great place to research things, marketing to what's trending in the economy and things like that. It's very interesting. But TikTok is ran by the CCP and I think that they're a bunch of degenerates between you and I. So one thing that they do is they limit one side of a political discussion, which is awful, okay? Because you should be able to have both sides of anything and being able to talk about that and say, oh, I like this, I don't like that, or wow, I don't think you're wrong, but they, they just get rid of it. And I have had, you know, you know, written up and be given, I've been given strikes on TikTok where they say, wow, you can't call somebody that. Now, somebody can write me and tell me that I am effing stupid and I can't respond back to that. And they leave their comment there. But if I respond back to that in the appropriate fashion, that's probably not, too business-like or adult-like, we've, we've eliminated your comment and we want you to know if you continue with this, you will be uh, removed from the platform. Lately, okay, it's gotten ridiculous. I had one where <laughs> somebody had written something like that and I love things like this, like uh, um, telling me how completely stupid I was and how a certain person's gonna get elected into office and she's just absolutely amazing and done so much for California. And I told her she was an imbecile. That's, you are an imbecile, is what I wrote. And they banned the comment and told me if I use language like that again, it's bullying. Bullying, imbecile, you're an imbecile. You are an imbecile, okay? You guys watch Dan, you guys are imbeciles. Do you get it? You see how wrong this is and how twisted this is? The, uh, what's it called? 
there's a global um, there is a global um, internet uh, restriction on from the European Union where they said if Elon Musk didn't watch what Donald Trump said last night that they would restrict it in the UK how insane is that right, we've gotten to that guys we've gotten to that now the last two things to finish this video Rusty wrote me and said his son needs dental surgery and they need his son to pay in advance for the dental surgery and it could be ten to fifteen thousand dollars up front with insurance he has to pay that I think dental insurance tell me somebody who's got good dental insurance that paid for your dental surgery but Rusty's kids gonna have to come up with ten to fifteen thousand dollars up front why have insurance guys why have insurance that's insane so he asked me not to use the doctor's name. He sent me the form over too, which I, which was loaded with the doctor's name and how you're gonna sign this and you're gonna pay us or else. And I was like, thank you, Rusty, but I can't share that. So, uh, final, 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 final story. Ghost license plates in uh, New York City cost uh, the state $200,000 a year for people evading tolls and things like this. Um, someday I'll tell you my toll road story, but imagine that. $200,000 a year from people that have gadgets where you have something that slides down on the license plate and makes it so they can't see your license plate, can't take pictures of it, and uh, they're going to find people for stuff like that, but they lose $200,000 a year and they're going to start arresting these people. And again, I'll tell you guys the toll road story later but it's crazy it's absolutely crazy that people try to do this people are not avoiding it just to i don't want to pay the tolls people don't have the money to pay the tolls right now that's what you're saying they can't afford the registration on vehicles they can't afford auto insurance that has not gone up five percent it's gone up 30 to 50 percent in most states so let me know guys let me know what you think about this name something that's reasonable right now name something that's a deal right now and don't say oh my bankruptcy lawyer was fantastic damn well, the guy that did our repossession, it was great. You know what I mean? No. Okay? Something real. Please like, please subscribe. And uh, if you want to get a hold of me, it's hello at iallegedly.com. We have a huge announcement coming out soon. And I cannot wait to share it with you. And uh, onward and upward, guys. Uh, don't forget to join the email list because one is going out in the next day or so. And I uh, just wanted to pull over at this beautiful spot and share it with you.